Good morning and welcome to worship here at Cross Life Church, our online broadcast. We are so glad that you are here. We have a Facebook check-in today that says, I want to see mercy, Mark 10. As a Bible story in Mark chapter 10, where we see Jesus showing mercy. And in this vivid series, we want to see Jesus and his mercy even more clearly in our lives. Welcome, everyone. I'm Pastor Darren. It's good to have you here today. A special welcome to our guests who are with us, especially if you're here for the first time. I pray that you are enriched by our worship and our broadcast today. To help us be a friendly church and communicate with us and connect, if you could scan this QR code and then send us a connection card online. It'll take you to a form, and that just comes as an email to me, and it lets me know your name and that you're out there worshiping with us today. I would love to see that. Hey, here's something going on today. In person at Cross Life Church today is our grand opening celebration where we're opening the doors to celebrate with our community our new building. As part of that, we want to show that we are showing mercy in the community and, and uh, reaching out in mercy to those who are in need or underprivileged. So we are partnered with the Pflugerville Pregnancy Resource Center and we are starting a baby bottle boomerang today. That set up in our lobby at church. What that means is that people grab bottles, they fill them with coins or cash or checks over a few weeks, bring them back here, and that's how we raise funds to support moms and kids in need in our community. You can participate that either on Sundays or you can even come by church during the week and pick up a baby bottle and participate in that as we support our community with mercy. With that, let's begin our worship with our opening song. and freedom my steadfast love my deep and boundless peace to this I hope my hope is only Jesus for my life is wholly bound to His oh how strange and divine I can sing all is mine Savior, he will stay. I labor on in weakness and rejoicing, for in my need his power is displayed. To this I hold, my shepherd will defend me. shall overcome yet not I but through Christ in me no fate I dread I know I am forgiven the future sure the price it has been paid for jesus bled and suffered for my pardon and he 
was raised to overthrow the grave. To this I hold, my sin has been defeated. Jesus now and ever is my peace. Oh, the chains are released. I can sing, I am free, yet not I, but through Christ in me. With every breath, I long to follow Jesus, for He has said that He will bring me home. And day by day, I know He will renew. Till I stand with joy before the throne To this I hold, my hope is only Jesus All the glory evermore to Him Then the race is complete, still my lips shall I hope, my hope is only Jesus, all the glory evermore to Him. When the race is complete, still my lips shall repeat, yet not I, but through Christ in me. When the My lips shall repeat, yet not I, but through Christ in me. Yet not I, but through Christ in me. Yet not I, but through Christ in me. Today, God teaches us about mercy. We read the miraculous healing that Jesus performed for a blind beggar named Bartimaeus. Do you know what mercy means? Mercy appears many times in the Bible. I'm going to reference it from the Old Testament from the book of Psalms. And the Hebrew word in the Old Testament for mercy literally means favor. Like when we ask someone to do us a favor, we're asking for mercy. I don't deserve the favor. I'm not paying you for the favor. That's why we call it a favor. There's no conditions. I'm just asking you to do something for me out of the goodness of your heart. That's what the word mercy means. Except we haven't always shown that to others. We've now not always been willing to do favors for others because we want it paid back. We want to earn. We want to put conditions on it. And that's where we need God's mercy today. Psalm 123, verses 2 and 3 says, Our eyes look to the Lord our God till he shows us his mercy. Have mercy on us, Lord. Have mercy on us. So we go to God and we say, God, we don't, we don't deserve this. All we're asking for you is a favor that we don't deserve. And God promises always to give that to us, to give us that mercy, to forgive us. So know that you are forgiven. Know that you have God's mercy all the time. And in that mercy, then show mercy to others. Let's pray about that in the words that Jesus himself taught us, the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, 
The power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We need the Lord's mercy, and so let's sing to him now, Lord, I need you. Lord, I come, I confess, bowing here, I find my rest, and without you, I fall apart, you're the one that guides my heart. Kids, what does it mean to beg? When you are begging for something, you are asking someone to give you something that you haven't really worked for, that you don't deserve. Like this sign. You might see homeless people or beggars by the side of the road sometimes, and they'll have a sign like this that says, I lost my job. I have four kids. I, I don't have any work. I can't work. Please help. They're begging. They're a beggar asking for money. And, and sometimes people will give them money to help them out. That's what begging means. God wants us to be beggars too. Not necessarily beggars for money, but God wants us to beg for his mercy. To ask him to give us love and grace and forgiveness that we don't deserve. So today, we're going to study a man who said to Jesus, have mercy on me. When we say to Jesus, have mercy on me, we are begging for his mercy 
and he always gives it. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you for your gift of mercy and forgiveness. Teach me that I can always ask for it even when I don't deserve it because you are my loving Savior. And all God's people said, Amen. I invite everyone to do a Facebook check-in right now that says, I want to see mercy, Mark 10. You can also, in a special way today, contribute to the Pflugerville Pregnancy Resource Center by this text to give that you will see on the screen next. You can text the number and support them with a financial contribution and help us show mercy to our community. After we give you a minute to do that, I'll be back and preach today's message. Margins. Margins are on the edge of the paper. So they're on the outer edge, so they're outside of what's important. They're, they're not the main thing. That's what margins are. And we can use the word margin with negative connotations, like if we were to say the word marginalized. What does that mean? That means that we're thinking of or we're talking about people who, who are underprivileged, people who, who live in the distance, like down by the river or on the wrong side of the tracks or in the backwoods. See, so marginalized people in Jesus' day, they hung out at the edge of the city limits. That's where they stayed and loitered, the blind, the crippled, the beggars. And today, the Bible teaches us about one particular marginalized person. He was a blind beggar named Bartimaeus. And he asked Jesus for help. And Jesus not only gave him the help he was looking for, Jesus gave him much, much more. So I want to read this account for you. And you try to figure out what Jesus gave him other than the healing that he asked for. This is from Mark chapter 10, beginning at verse 46. As Jesus and his disciples, together with a large crowd, were leaving the city, a blind man, Bartimaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many rebuked him and told him to be quiet, but he shouted all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said, call him. So they called to the blind man, cheer up. On your feet, he's calling you. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and he came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. Go, said Jesus, your faith has healed you. 
Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. You know, think how frequently this happened to Jesus. It's almost like he won the, the lottery and there's, and there's all kinds of people, strangest friends, always coming to him for handouts. Jesus, help me see. Jesus, help me walk. Jesus, heal my sister. Jesus, heal my leprosy. Jesus, raise my brother from the dead. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Why did Jesus encounter so many marginalized people? Because that's where Jesus hung out. He was attracted to marginalized people. Much more than people in palaces or people in positions of power at city headquarters or the synagogue, Jesus was attracted to the marginalized much more than the pretty people with well-manicured yards and, and lives, <laughs> more than those who were so privileged that they, they didn't even need Jesus' help. Jesus was more attracted to the marginalized than he was to people who are self-made. See, self-made people do not need to borrow from their brother-in-law. Self-made people do not need to move back in with mom and dad. Self-made people are so independent and strong and self-made, they don't need a savior. They don't need Jesus. And there's a problem. The self-made don't need a savior. And then there are the marginalized. Marginalized people are people bearing heavy burdens people whose business has failed. Marginalized people are people who are confused about, about their direction in life. People who are heavily criticized even though they're doing a good job. People who have been cut from the cheerleading squad. Marginalized people are people who might be depressed or, or disabled. People who are living with more fear than they want to live with and, and followers of Jesus living with less faith than they want to live with. So, so which one are you? Are you marginalized or are you self-made? You know, think of this in real everyday terms like children, children who want to impress their parents and show their mom and dad that they can do it on their own. I can do it, mom. I can do it, dad. Right, you hear children say that all the time. I can say my ABCs. I can tie my shoes all by myself. I can count to 10. I, I know how to use a fork. I can, I can drive by myself when I'm 16 years old and get my car for the first time. <laughs> I can do it. I can do it. And so children want to show mom and dad that, that they can do it, that they can handle it. There's, with that independence comes a sense of, of achievement, of accomplishment. But there are dangers with being independent and self-made as... A stubborn two-year-old will find out, as a rebellious teenager will find out, and as adults will find out when we try to be so self-made and so independent that, that we just think of, it, of Jesus in this way. Jesus is for weak people. Jesus is for people who, who don't have it all together. And, and man, that, that's not me. I want to be strong. I want to be independent. I want to be so wise. So uh, when I become that way, I'm self-made, and then I don't I don't need Jesus. And again, the self-made don't need Jesus as a savior because we're, we're so impressive. We want to be impressive to others and impressive to ourselves. Let me give you some reality here. Take your most impressive day. All right, email inbox at the end of the day, zero. You've got a thousand likes on social media. You have wooed numerous relationships. You are rocking it. You are hitting home runs at work all day. You, you, you are, this is an impressive day. Oh, and so you take this, this day and you bring it to Jesus and you say, Jesus, check this out. Check out my best day. And you do it so that you can win his favor so that you can earn points with Jesus. You know what he thinks of that? He's not just disappointed. He's disgusted. If you're bringing it to him to, to win points to earn something from him. Um, that doesn't impress Jesus at all. Here's why. Even your best is not enough. So Jesus doesn't want your best to be your savior because it's never good enough. He wants, Jesus <laughs> wants himself, Jesus wants to be your savior and only he can be your savior. He will be impressed 
by what you give him, if you take whatever you have, full of flaws, in the margins, and, and, you, and you just give it to him the way that it is, and that you don't need to be impressive to yourself, to others, to Jesus, that you just take what you have. Think of children who, who color outside the lines, and, and they bring what they've colored to mom or dad, and it's not Picasso-like artistry, but they bring it with the heart of a child who, who doesn't notice the mess outside the margins, um, doesn't let that give, get in the way. Um, I have some pictures here I want to show you, um, put together by the kids here at Cross Life. And I keep these in my office. I'm actually setting up my office in the new building. I, I don't have it all set up yet, but, but I want these pictures to be highlighted uh, in my office in, in, the, in the building. There's, uh, there's Jesus riding into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday on a donkey. That's a pretty good, pretty good picture, actually. Um, here's one that illustrates this a little bit more, coloring outside the lines. But I love it. That's, that's the heart of a child giving this to their pastor. Um, <laughs> a couple of middle schoolers, um, the confirmation class students left this one for me. That uh, It looks like it's colored by a four-year-old, but I think they enjoyed going outside the lines, going into the margins. And I love that because that's where Jesus meets us. Um, and so I, wanna, I want you to see Bartimaeus. Uh, in this story, and, and let's look at, look at Bartimaeus. The, the crowd was shushing him, and the Bible then says, but he shouted all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. So Bartimaeus is marginalized. He knows it. He knows Jesus knows it. He begs for mercy, for undeserved help, for a favor. That's when you're at your best, when you're asking Jesus for something undeserved. That's when Jesus is... is is going to help you the most. Jesus healed Bartimaeus, not because he was so strong or smart, not because he met his sales quotas as employee of the month, not because he was an a invincible dad or a, or a perfect mom. Why did Jesus heal Bartimaeus? Look here. Jesus tells him, your faith has healed you. So Bartimaeus placed his trust in Jesus because he knew Jesus to be merciful, compassionate, present. And you can trust Jesus too. He's merciful to you. He's compassionate to you. He's present in your mistakes and your margins. And, and he freely gives you what you'll never deserve, including the forgiveness of sins. He's compassionate to you. He doesn't, Jesus doesn't give you the cold shoulder. He doesn't turn away from you when, when you refuse to show mercy to others. Jesus continues to show his mercy to you like he showed to the blind beggar, Bartimaeus. That's what mercy means, favor. And you don't need to do anything to impress Jesus. You don't need to make up for all your mistakes because Jesus in his love just shows you his mercy all the way to dying on the cross. And so don't worry about impressing Jesus but he just meets you where you're at. He meets you in your messes. He meets you in your mistakes. And, and that, that is the mercy of Jesus. Jesus gives mercy to people who can't control their spending. Jesus gives mercy to people who have made a mess of their marriages. Jesus gives mercy to people who have burned bridges in relationships that they wish they hadn't. He gives mercy, which is undeserved favor and grace to, to any of those people, including you. And including Bartimaeus. And then that's when he tells Bartimaeus, go, after he healed him, go. See, Jesus had things for Bartimaeus to do, and he has things for you to do also, places to go, people to see, a mission to accomplish, uh, relationships to heal. And Jesus does, he's not embarrassed by you. He's not going to keep you behind closed doors. But he enjoys you like he enjoyed watching this blind man, Bartimaeus, jump up, jump around, shout out loud, praise God that he could see that's mercy in action. That's faith. And now that's Jesus' call for you to go. Find the marginalized. Show mercy and then see what happens. Jesus in his Sermon on the Mount said, Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Someone shared with me the story of uh, James Radio Kennedy, nicknamed Radio 
Um, and there's a number of, of write-ups about him on the internet. Um, but it's a fascinating story about mercy, showing mercy and receiving mercy that I want to share with you today. Um, it, there's a few places online that you can read it. Here's one. It says this. We begin way over there, out on the margin. We begin with a dirty, disheveled 18-year-old boy roaring down a hill in a grocery cart, screaming, holding a transistor radio to his ear. No one ever plays with him. He can barely speak and never understands the rules. He can't read or write a word. He needs to be put away in some kind of institution, Pe people keep telling his mother, because anything can happen out there in the margin. And the story continues on the football field of uh, T.L. Hanna High School in Anderson, South Carolina. And Radio is there, and he's, he's at this high school football practice field. And he's pretending he's the coach, and he, he's barking out commands and orders and, and in his own imaginary game. And then the real coach comes over, the real coach from the team, and uh, embraces Radio and invites him to become the team manager. But he came much, much more than the team manager. See, Radio had attended a school for the learning disabled for a few months, and it, just, it, it didn't work, but T.L. Hanna High School worked. One of the many stories about radio that made me smile as I read about him is that uh, when he realized he was old enough to graduate from 12th grade in, at, at this high school, he started approaching students and staff, trying to convince them that he was in the 11th grade. <laughs> and the school let him say that for decades. He stayed there for a long, long time. And here's what the principal says on the school website as he puts it all together. This is very revealing about mercy. He says this, It would be easy to talk about all, this, all that the school has done for radio, but the miraculous thing about this story is what radio has done for the school. He has a permanent smile on his face. He's never without his ability to shake hands and hug necks. He returns exponentially whatever love is given to him. He is without a Harvard degree or a Pulitzer Prize or a professional football contract, but his fame has surpassed all of these accolades. And the story is simple. Love and compassion can change lives. It has changed his, and in return, he has changed ours. And we are better people for having known him. The showing mercy to the marginalized shows that you are good. But receiving mercy from them, and, and before that, receiving mercy from Jesus, shows you are even in a better place. Amen. Please pray with me. Jesus, your mercy is strong and gentle. It is eternal, and it is in the moment with us whenever we need you, Lord. This account of Bartimaeus needing your mercy and you, Jesus, giving him not just healing but mercy too makes us hopeful, Lord, that you have mercy on us too. For those who are praying with me who have a particular sin that they cannot overcome, Jesus, your mercy on that sin, sin I know, will free them from it. Help them to believe that. May these words, Jesus, help us not just to receive your mercy but to show your mercy to others all the time and every day. We pray, Jesus, in your saving and powerful name. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake Until I lay my head I will sing Of the goodness of God All my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am made I will sing of the goodness of God 
I love your voice You have led me through the fire In darkest night You were close like no other I know you as a father I know you as a friend And I have been in the goodness of God Oh, all my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so, so Thank you for being part of our worship today as we continue through the Vivid series, wanting to see Jesus more clearly. And when we do, we see other things and other people, even ourselves, in our own lives more clearly too. Next Sunday, strengthened by the storm. I hope to see you then. God bless your week.
Thank you.